I'm talking big money, no nickels. I swear these people penny pension. Pull up on you, paint glisten. Push up on you with the issue. That glizzy gon' eject the missiles. Damn, like those. Man, we live on the back streets with your girl Cole, man. We got the homie in here. That is, by the way, HTX, man, live in Houston, man. Let the streets know who he is, where you're from, and what you got coming, if you don't mind. Hey, what's up, y'all? It's your girl K. Roll the motherfucking Don, and if you're just now tuning in, you're late. Oh. But I'm here with my girl Coco. We finna get this shit turned up, all right? I got some new music coming for y'all, so I'm excited to, you know, share this with y'all. This is my first interview, actually. Man, I appreciate that. So look, you making history right here. You gonna know, remember. Man, I appreciate that, because cause you gonna blow, man. You was playing some of the music off camera, man. Tell them what you got coming organically. Man, I was asking you why you titled the mixtape there, whatever you got, what you got coming, man. But give them a little background of why you... Title to that, what made you? Organically grown. Yes, organically grown, but why you decided to do everything organic? Yeah. Well, because, like, when I, I really had to think about did I want to do music because I'm very spontaneous. I just like to do things just because I feel like I can, you know, I never like to limit myself. So, um, I was like, dang, I was like, if I'm going to do this music shit, like, we got to go all the way. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about music, I'm talking about movies, TV, all that. Like, okay. I wanted it all, so... Um, you know, definitely, I was like, but I don't know shit about this. Because I've okay. been rapping for a year and people do not believe A year at uh, 10K, man. Tell people year. how you got to that, man. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't get 10K in over three years, man. You got 10K in a year, man. I had man. like 2,000 two of them things. Okay, like, okay. Like, you know, I had 2,000 of them things, like two, 3,000. Well, at first, I was going down the path of DJing because... How I fell in love with music was because I was a dancer growing up. Okay. And so I did hip hop, contemporary, lyric, all this stuff like that. And so it was just, I was around all of that and I would go up music off of feeling. So then I wanted to be at all the parties. I was a girl jigging, you know, and twerking at the same time. And I was like, right. damn, DJ would be live. Like I was always trying to be at the DJ booth. You know what I'm saying? Just okay. like just to be up there, feel that energy. And I was just like, I could control the vibe. And I started, you know, getting mentored by, you know, a few of my fellow homies and um, I was learning, I was mixing and things like that. And so I was getting all this music. People was just sending me music like this. And I was, like, and I was just like, damn, like people are like just rapping about anything. So I was like, I'm going to write something. So I wrote this rap. I went to a baby shower mm -hmm. and saw some of my homeboys that I ain't seen in a long time. And... They was like, damn, like, what you been up to? And I was just like, hey, they was like, we've been doing this music shit. And I was just like, hmm, okay. And so we went in the car, started listening to music. And I played this song. And it was crazy because it was on an alternative beat. I played the song. And um, I rapped. I just did it. Uh, mm -hmm. I felt it. They just, like, looked at me like. So they put me in the studio the same night. And, you know. The rest of the tissues. Then we developed the Russian Cream, the remix. And we. I put that together and okay. we got that out and then that's how it started. Okay, okay, I feel that. Speaking of DJ, being being a female, being that you're in a male-dominated industry, why do you think there's a shortage of female DJs? Well, honestly, I just really feel like maybe females just don't want to deal with the bullshit, you know what okay. I'm saying? Just because it's like you really don't have to. Right. And it, it, comes, it comes a lot with just like being on the scene in general. Like you know? what? What you mean it comes just, with like? It comes with a lot just because... Like, I've, I've even dated guys that were just, like, you're too well-known. Like, yeah, Wait a minute, what? Yeah, yeah. like, I've even, yeah, I, I've had a, a nigga tell me, like, you too, you too. You too well-known. Yeah, like, you okay. too, like, out there. And, not, and that's the thing, not even in a bad way. You know, just, like, everybody knows you anywhere I go. And that was crazy because even after that, despite the situation, even after that, because it was said, you know, it was brought to my conscience, I, I started, you know, noticing it. It was going like from every like a week to every few days. People, I would go somewhere. Literally, I could just be at like Walmart, and a bitch would be like, "Hey, you're you're this K Row, right?" And I'm like, mm. Mm. "How do you plan to deal with that going forward? Being that you you're going to get more popular, you're going to get more known. It comes with you know being famous, people seeing you. Being that we live in a social media world, like you know." You wake up tomorrow, you could have 100K followers after the interview it airs or something like that. How do you plan on maintaining it? Maintaining okay. yourself in it? That's the thing. That's what I'm working on right now, actually. It's okay. just mastering my energy. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
the people that are around me. You know, because I'm not one of those people that fuels off the negative energy. Right. I'm that person. I know when I'm hurt. I'm very in tune with my emotions. I know when I'm hurt. And I know when I'm right when I'm feeling anything negative. I switch into positive mode. You know what I'm saying? I try to get out of that. So it's like now I'm I'm taking it and I'm putting it in the music. You know what uh -huh. I'm saying? Because that's one thing that I said I wanted to do was bring you know a feeling back to music to where. Like my music on low key sound all over the place because I'm all over the place. You know okay. what I'm saying? I'm gonna go, I'm making a song. I have a song. This is how I feel. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I go and be like, oh yeah, fuck you. Or I, I could you. be I like, you know, hey, I got you. All over my niggas right now. You know what I'm saying? So I it's feel kind that. of just like, and I think that just goes with what also what I'm trying to just deliver as you know with my brand is just being like real, just unapologetic with it. You know what, mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I'm just giving it to you raw. You know, straight shot, no chaser. Like. This is how it is. Like it goes way deeper than the surface with me. Type okay. Shit. We were talking a little bit off camera about like having to tone it down. And I know you have like one of your biggest supporters along with you, man, mm -hmm. in the building supporting you, man. Talk yeah. about what made you go make that move. Man, sh shout out my boy, man. He in the building, man. Yeah. Artwork, man. He rap produced, man. If y'all need like anything, <laughs> make sure y'all fool yeah, with my boy. Yeah. Let him know the IG real quick. VS Drawing on every social media. Every yeah. social media. Y'all get at my nigga. He does it all. Anything you need. Cover arts. Like, Jesus. If you just want a good idea, hit him up. Okay. <laughs> like, I feel it. But talk about, like, the motivation to really... It's kind of like you were saying the Biggie Lil Kim thing, like toning it down a little bit and yeah. taking another route, but still being true to who you is. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we did have the Biggie Lil Kim moment. <laughs> because pretty much... When I first started rapping, I was just like, yeah, like, I feel like, you know, I'm, I'm in my own lane. You know what I'm saying? I'm doing shit that ain't nobody even really seen before. You know what I'm right. saying? Like, I'm in my own lane. Like, I'm doing my own thing. Um, so, it was like, then I was like, I'm just going straight. That was me. Just get on and just run it. Just done it. What, what's the chord? I didn't know any. I didn't know anything about structuring a song. Like, I was just getting on just... Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? Then you know it was the people around me were like, hold on, wait, wait, wait. Mm -hmm. You need like a, you need like a, like a groove. Right yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? You need something new. Then it was like, okay, all right, I need. So basically, I just need to put some feeling in. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I'm saying what I need to say, but they was just teaching me how to break it up and things like that. And it was like, as we become adults, you know, you realize you come across a lot of like petty people in the world. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people who don't have your, your, your you know, what's best for you right. in their mind, you know? It's all just about what's going to get them where they want to go. And me, like, being the Virgo, you know what I'm saying? Okay, we just I'm naturally, a Virgo. You know, Virgos shut up my Virgos. Oh, I knew the energy we, was crazy we, in the building, We good people, you know? man. We good people. Look. <laughs> we really is. No, but for real, you know what I'm saying? We always get the people that we need to fix. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But that's the thing. This is how you judge them. This is how you get them cook up. It's the ones that want to do it, and then the ones that you got to keep struggling with. Right. That's how you weed them out. You okay, know what I'm saying? Okay. But we always going to get those type of people because that's what we do. We fix it. You know what I'm saying? That's we'll really take the beating. You know what I'm saying? Okay, okay. Organically grown, man. That's coming out shit pretty soon, man. Do you have like a favorite song off the project that you recorded or that's true to you? Like, damn, this one had to go on this project? Definitely, I would say... Found you. Mm. Found you is a track because it's really kind of just it's one of those songs where it can be however you you mean it. You know what I mean? Right. Found you, whatever it, whatever you is. It could be music. It could okay, be okay. A person. It could be you know what I'm saying. It could be anything. Okay, okay, okay. Found you, man. Make yes. sure y'all go yeah. when she d do drop it, man. Make sure y'all go flood it, man. And I noticed, man, you travel pretty much, man. Talk about how important it is traveling as an artist, as somebody that's looking forward to continue to grow your brain. How important mm -hmm. is traveling? Well, see, this is the thing. You have to. Mm -hmm. I don't. I, I'm not. I do not have no money. You know what I'm saying? Like right. I'm. I am struggling and bugging in this thing. I'm really getting it like, right. fresh out the mud. Like everything that's came to me is just. Just the energy aligning, you know what I'm saying? This is the force of aligning, like everything. Everybody that I've been meeting that's been coming in my circle has literally have, has just fucked with the vision. It's, mm. it's just like, you know, we're going to get it on the back end. Like, we're going to focus on this right now because that's the thing. All it takes is consistency, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, our lives could be different by Christmas, that's what I'm telling you. Thanks, man. Because it's for real. Speak on the vision, man. You just said you that, man. Talk about vision. that. Because it's hard to get... 
our generation, we are very, very materialistic. We're very oh. selfish. We're very opinionated. We're very, you know, we just have, we, we, we're, we, we express ourselves so much than, you know, our moms and our parents do. You know what I'm saying? That's you why. You think I, so? Yeah, we do. Think about it. Okay, I'll give a perfect example. You know, being gay. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Being gay, being bisexual. And me, I am technically bisexual. You know what I'm saying? I was attracted to girls in sixth grade. Right. I didn't lose my virginity to a guy to like my summer of like senior year. Like, you know what I mean? Okay. Like, it was just like, but I've always, you know, like that way. But that wasn't how people, how we are now, how we can just be. You know, oh, you weren't girl, able to be. Back you know, then. you were not able to do that. Like, it was and then, risky. Exactly, and it was like really just coming out of that phase when we was like really trying to figure out, well, do we like this? Or do we? Anybody's question? Do we? That's when it was still you still had to deal with that in your head, type right? Thing. But now it's it's just expressed. It's everywhere. Now people are like, people are so quick to publicly bash everybody you know what i'm saying nobody is like hey mm -hmm. i'm gonna come over to your house we're gonna talk about this you know what i'm saying like nobody's rational that. anymore everybody's just that. everything's a scene okay i feel you know, that. everything's I feel a play that. I feel everything's that. a finesse okay i feel you know? that i feel that uh bearing off for a little bit we just lost like a great you know uh legend you know nipsey hustle man what was your initial reaction when you found out he had got killed well, see, this is the thing. We were actually, I actually was at a show. Oh, okay. I just got done performing. I was in Dallas at the 40 ounce art overdose. Definitely check them out. Okay, definitely. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Shot them out Everything again. they had on my art, like vendors, there was clothes, there was okay. food, there was alcohol, everything. It was weed, it was everything. <laughs> okay. But, um, I just got done performing, and then my homie Vando was going. <coughs> He was performing and I was standing behind these two girls that were sitting down on this bench and this girl had turned her phone and she was on the shade room. <coughs> she was on the shade room and it literally just said, Nipsey has to pass his away, you know. Yeah. I'm just like, and I just look like across the, you know, everybody that I had came with was like on the other side of the stage. So I'm just like, I just look at them and they just look at me and they just like shaking their head. Yeah, bro. Like, and it was literally just like, you know, that weird feeling when it just starts raining and it's sunny outside. Yeah. Like it was crazy. Like you could just feel it. No, that, that was crazy. So that's why even me and my team now we use hustle forever because it's he has inspired a lot of people that are on my team. You know what I mean? Like even just everything going on, with just like the um, just just you know connecting with spirituality and everything like that. Like it's just we use we use the hashtag hustle forever now just to continue to push it as a okay. movement. Just you know. Because that that's one thing that's all that's all he did was hustling, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And why would you not want to spread that on? Okay. So, okay. It's just that. something, you know, because I me and my team we like to have things to you gotta give people things to believe in instead of just giving people things. Facts. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just trying to do this shit a different way. Okay, I feel that man, I respect that man. The homie in here, man, being that you from Dallas, man, you you in Houston, man, you been in Houston how long now? Four months. Four months. Yeah, one so months. Yeah, freshly since December, new. Since December first. How are you adjusting? Like, well, at first, like, honestly, I really was just inside, you know. What I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Just trying to like see what did I want to do with this music, really, just in hibernation because that's the thing. I, I'm, I'm a very like social person, so I usually post all the time. But then I'm like, right now, what do I want people to see if I don't have anything? Okay. So, like, you know, I already didn't drop music. I already didn't say it. Like, I'm doing this music shit. Technically, I ain't dropped nothing. So it's looking like, oh, yeah, that was just a phase you went through. I'm you know what it. I mean? It wasn't okay. really, you know what I'm saying? I'm Right now, I'm just, it's like the calm before the storm. Okay. Because uh, we already working on the next project. Yeah, we you know what I'm saying? We that. already, yeah. Like, we going okay. to... Before yeah. before uh, Houston, you was in Dallas. Before that, I was actually in San Marcos. It's like around Austin. Well, uh, so I was okay. in Texas State for a little bit okay. as well. Yeah. So then oh, okay. I just started like working out there. I was oh, like, okay. I didn't, go, I didn't go to Texas State anymore, and I just started working out there. And then you know I just started moving to Houston. So I went to move to Houston and started like working on music because that's where like the producers are. That's where Jaron is. That's where you know. And then like my manager and stuff and that. So we just we're really now just. Houston Dallas, Houston Dallas, Houston mm. Dallas. So I'm full time music. Like I don't even work for mm. nobody no more. Just full time. How's it important to take that step and do everything full time? It's very, very important, but it is very, very hard. I am not going to. The hardest thing by far. 
the hardest thing by far it's just that's where you really have to see you you're you're ripping your your stability away you know mm. when you're doing your choosing and say okay i'm gonna quit this because this is the thing People were telling me, like, you know, eventually you're not going to be able to do both because I was working at Wells Fargo. They're like, you're not going to be able to work at Wells Fargo. I was working for, like, three years, going on four years. And they yeah. like, you're not going to be able to be working here and doing music because you, you have to be 100% into it, you know what I'm saying, to get it where you want to go. If you're not 100% in, it's never going to go. You know what I'm saying? It's never going to go anywhere. You just mm. going to keep doing this and everybody else can keep surpassing you up. So by the time you think you got it, you really don't got it. Everybody else on some mm. different shit, you know what I mean? So... I did it, but then it's just like now you have no money. How do you how do you survive pretty much? Man, and okay. then still try to make your dream come true, and still try to because you know you could just easily go get a job. You know what I'm saying? You could go Uber, you could go you do live, anything. Right, but right. how do you say no? Like I'm gonna say and I'm gonna do this because me, if I really put my mind to this shit, I could take out before I fucking make my first paycheck. Really, I'm just saying. You just gotta be optimistic about it. You gotta be optimistic, man. The two tracks, man, that you sent me over, we were, we wasn't able to preview them, but we was listening to a little bit off of camera, man. Talk about the one that you dropping next week. I'm shooting it next week. Shooting next week, my bad. Yeah, that's bad. how rumors get started. Okay, my bad, man. Shooting shoot next week, no, not dropping. We're shooting the video next week, so Dallas, y'all definitely wanna make sure. Yeah, Pete, cause we gonna, we shooting the visual next week, but Big Boss, you know what I'm saying? It's definitely going to give you the summer vibes. You know, we're going into the summertime. So all the pool parties, strip clubs, any type of uh, fiesta, you're going to be playing Big Boss, I'm telling you, because it, go, it goes hard. It goes that hard. Play a little bit of the Big Boss if you don't mind, man. If y'all don't.